Welcome to the Vision by Protivity interview. I'm Joe Kornick, Editor-in-Chief of Vision by Protivity, our global content resource examining big themes that will impact the C-suite and executive boardrooms worldwide. Today, we're exploring the future of government, and we welcome in Nardos Bekele Thomas, CEO of the African Union Development Agency, commonly known as NEPAD, the New Partnership for African Development. Endorsed by African Union heads of state and government, including 33 prime ministers within Africa, Bekele Thomas became the first woman to lead the Africa Union Development Agency when she took over two years ago. She is a powerhouse who has influenced growth and development in Africa for nearly 40 years, serving in prominent positions with governments of multiple countries and for more than two decades with the United Nations. Nardos, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me and uh, for this opportunity to converse with you. Now, I know NEPAD aims to transform Africa with regional and continental priority development programs and projects. So can you highlight a few accomplishments since you took over and then maybe talk a little bit about what's the next big one on the agenda? Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, I'll start by saying that the NEPAD has transformed itself to being the African Union Development Agency. Uh, which is really an expanded mandate of uh, uh, making sure the development activities in the continent, you know, there are many, and if you go country by country, actually development cooperation is, you know, um, overcrowded. I mean, the space is overcrowded. But, you know, how do you coordinate these activities and make sure that they are impactful? And this is one of the mandates that uh, was assigned to our DANEPAD and also to identify, you know, the gaps and make sure that these gaps are filled in and the necessary requisite resources are mobilized for the realization of the agenda that was uh, put in place. So, you know, the outer impact actually is really, I mean, it's a monumental, um, has monumental tasks and responsibilities. Um, and therefore, you know, I'm just humbled uh, to being the CEO of this organization. Now coming to um, when I came to Auda Nepal, of course, you know, this whole transition took place in 2018 and um, uh, 2019 being the COVID year, we have to subtract like two years um, of our uh, time, you know, and uh, the two years were really more into COVID, you know, and uh, responding to the challenges of the COVID. Um, and therefore, in reality, the operationalization of the African Union Development Agency came into effect with my coming into this position in 2022. Uh, and since then, the first thing that came to my mind is, well, you know, if Africa has to coordinate its activities, its development cooperation, its development activities at national, regional and continental level, then we need to have uh, a common framework. We need to have a plan. Uh, and therefore, you know, the first thing that we started doing is the review of the 10 year implementation plan. How are we faring? How did we perform? Where did we go wrong? What are the best practices? And how can we build on the best practices, but also address the deficiencies? And then come out with the design of the second 10 year implementation plan. In terms of infrastructure, which is the bedrock of um, African integration and industrialization, um, we um, had uh, a big conference uh, in Dakar um, last year in February. And this conference was different from the conferences we used to have before. In the past, we used to have, you know, politicians come, you know, ministers or whatever, and, you know, make, you know, statements of statements, commitments of the commitments. And, and sometimes, you know, uh, they still remain to be unfulfilled promises. And therefore, we wanted it to be different. So we brought the program owners, these are countries, of course, the project owners, but we brought also the development finance institutions that could, go to, that could do a guarantee fund, you know, that could come out with guarantee funds, and also the private sector and investors together. And, you know, we had uh, deal rooms Project by project, we brought them and go, went into deeper discussions and understanding. This yielded concrete results to, you know, the surprise of so many. Um, we brought 800 
million dollars for feasibility pre feasibility studies uh, of our pipeline projects under the program for infrastructure development for Africa. But more than that, the eighty-six billion dollars were mobilized for the construction of roads, transport, energy, you know, water dams, and all this, um, and also uh, on digital um, infrastructure. So you mentioned infrastructure, which I think is interesting. I know that's one of the priority areas, um, and I think there's eight priority areas that you that you focus on, among others, of course. Um, and those are, I, I guess, political, um, economic, and corporate governance, agriculture, um, infrastructure, as we mentioned, education, uh, health, uh, science and technology, market access and tourism, and the environment. So I'm just curious. What are the biggest priorities for governments in Africa to better serve their citizens? I mean, what are the biggest ones that we need that you need to address? All of them are important, and and you know, and I truly believe, um, you know, that we need to do everything, and we can do that if we come out with catalytic approaches. I mean, catalytic programs. Because you know these programs are intertwined and and they can bring all the different sectors together. Um, so you know, for us, for example, what we have chosen for the coming five years is infrastructure is very important. One of the um, and you touched on this a little bit in your some of your answers, um, but can you talk to me a little bit about how the the public and private sector uh, companies, either you know inside or outside Africa, even can collaborate and and work together to move Africa forward? Thank you very much. I think you know this has been really um, uh, one of my should I say forte, but you know the, I've been dealing with the private sector in my past, you know, in the UN. Uh, that's an area where I have been working, and I think it's so critical. No one country can do this alone, and we need, you know, all, you know, the support that we require, and especially um, the private sector, because they have, you know, stake in all this, you know, the development of country or the development of the continent in general. It will offer them you know, more opportunities to expand uh, their, their businesses. So the public-private partnership is critical. Today, I just finished, actually this morning, a meeting with the Indonesian government, where, you know, when I was in Bali for the G20 last year, um, it was very interesting to see how the private sector and the public sector were hand in hand, and we were having discussions with them. And therefore, beyond also, you know, our private sectors, we are going beyond that to, to the uh, ones that are outside, you know, like Asian uh, Business Council, you know, the American Business Council, the Corporate Council on Africa, the uh, European uh, Business Councils and chamber of, Chambers of Commerce, and we work, you know, hand in hand with them. Um, especially in investment, when we talk about infrastructure, I mean, we really need this. But we need them also to team up with African investors so that, you know, together, you know, the build equity and the, the, um, uh, they meet the challenges um, that Africa has to offer. It's not a challenge, actually. It's a big opportunity. It's a, it's a huge potential. And, and, uh, and I, I think um, working hand in hand, we can perfect the conducive environment, the environment that they require to thrive, but also make sure that investment flows are smooth and directed in the growth areas you know, that are identified by Africa. Right. Right. And that in investment is, is, is so key, obviously. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and sort of take a 30,000 foot view here and talk a little bit about the continent itself and the future. Um, it is the fastest growing population of any continent on earth. Um, by 2050, the UN estimates a quarter of all people on the planet will live in Africa. So my question is, how can African governments navigate sort of that rapid growth? And are there ways that countries can collaborate to help lift the entire continent as it goes through this, this next two to, you know, two to three decade rapid growth period? Africa is showing, you know, confidence in itself for the first time. You go to the G20, you go to the COP, you go everywhere, Africa is standing, Africa is talking, Africa is, is taking a space 
which it didn't uh, do before. And therefore, you know, that is foundational, it's fundamental, and I'm glad that is happening. The second thing that is very important and clear is that Africa has its own vision. Africa started believing in itself and understanding that it's sitting on a wealth, uh, wealth in terms of natural resources, but wealth in terms of the human resources and the capital. And therefore, you know, um, I think, you know, for Africans, this is, this is really a time to, to, to build on this confidence level and, and implement the programs that would make them to, 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 uh, to be, you know, the, the powerhouse, the global powerhouse, which I am sure, and I am so confident. When I am sitting with heads of states, when I am sitting in the AU summit, I see so much, so much energy and that I live, you know, with, you know, inspired, but also encouraged. So we hope that, you know, um, the rest of the world uh, will support us in making uh, the, the dream, the Africa dream to be a reality. Bonados, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the time and the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. And thank you for watching the Vision by Protivity interview. On behalf of Nardos Bakeli Thomas, I'm Joe Cornick. We'll see you next time.